There you go. <laughs> How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing very well. Thanks for for making the time this evening. Oh, well, this evening here in the UK. Yes, yeah. So, um, you know, when I put out the fact that we we're, were bringing on, I had um, had loads of questions. Um, but one of the things about our show is that most of my viewers like to know the background side. They, you know, they want to. They see the videos, they see the albums, but they want to know what was like behind the scenes, uh, the good stuff and the challenging stuff, because it's in this time of COVID and stuff, it's always motivating to hear that, you know, it's not always glamorous at the, at the other side and you have to go through stuff uh, to come through and stuff. Um, I have an international audience, so it'd be great to find out where, where, you, where you're from and uh, go from there. Oh man, um, born and raised in Chicago. Um singer songwriter producer uh um yeah <laughs> so yeah chicago you know because i was um i went to college in, in milwaukee and uh, chicago you know we used to michigan avenue the pier and stuff yeah. never really got down to the south side but what part of chicago were you were you raised uh south side um um i grew up on 45th and king drive and then you know uh, my mom and dad were separated so I, I lived with my dad as well and he lived on 52nd and damon so it's like right, right there in the heart of the hood, you know. Wow, I mean, there's a lot in the news about Chicago right now. Um, but as I said, when I when I used to live there, it wasn't when I used to visit, it wasn't as bad as things are now. But music, though, where where was inspiration from for you? Uh, for me, musically, man, my mom had a hell of a record collection, man. I mean, um, she had so many records, man. She probably had over four thousand records, man. What, four thousand. Yeah, she because she collected records for a long time, man. And um, um, every day, man, before she get up and go to work, man, she she had a music blasting. So um, my inspiration came from you know listening to Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, Gene Carn, Patrice Russian, the Ivy Brothers, uh, the Commodores, uh, wow. Tina Marie, Rick James, um, uh, Keith Sweat, Babyface. I mean, just everybody. You know, yeah. everybody that was out because she. You know, she loved music that much that she bought it with the stylistics, um, wow. the five stair step. Um, you know, so my, my music uh, uh, diversity goes from from the beginning. My grandma played a lot of jazz music too. Wow. Sarah Bond, uh, um, Dizzy uh, Gillespie, uh, just just so much stuff I was uh, uh, was able to listen to growing up. The, the, the ability to sing, where did that come from? Uh, well, my mom and my dad sings. My my dad. Uh, 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 is an awesome singer, man. Uh, um, him and his brothers had a group. Um, wow. they, they had a gospel group. They sung um, a lot of gospel. Then they, they switched over to R&B a little bit. Uh, and my mom was also in a group. Um, they met each other, and then they uh, they had my sister, and they had me. And my grandmama sang as well. Wow. Did, was it always in your, in, in, from you to become a, a singer, or what was it like as a kid growing up? I mean, for me, man, I... I, I I, I couldn't really see myself doing anything else but music, you know, like that was, that was the thing, you know, when I was in, in, in high school and, and, and in school, man, I, I was a horrible student, you know, I was, the funny thing about it is I would pass the test, but I, but um, um, I didn't like school. The only thing I liked about school was music class, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'd have all A's in the music class and, and, and be horrible at everything else oh, because that's, that was, I, I was interested in music, you know, so, yeah. yeah. Now I did hear that you joined a group. Was it Porsche or Porsche? Porsche. Porsche. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. What was the idea? I mean, about being in a group? Because I was it. Was it how, what year was this? Around what year was this? Um, I think I was in the group. My group started around when I was maybe fifteen. I don't know uh, uh, how many years ago that was, but but uh, um, I think so, it was around maybe ni ninety. Maybe, maybe late eighties or something like that. Yeah, no, yeah, about, yeah, but I say about yeah, about about eighty nine. Okay, something like that. I mean, I was in high school and I I worked at this um uh, I worked at McDonald's and um um this is how I got in the group. I was working at McDonald's. I was flipping the burgers and singing and stuff like that. And then the manager had came over. He was like, "Yo, dude, man, you sound pretty good. 
uh, we're having an audition for our group. I think you should come and try out for it. So, uh, you know, quite naturally, you know, I, I went, I sang for them. They loved it. And they put me in a group. And that's that's how I, I got in that group. So were you guys performing in talent shows and stuff? Man, we had countless talent shows around Chicago. Uh, we we went up against a lot of groups that were in Chicago at the time. Uh, we made a pretty good name for ourselves in Chicago. Um, but we couldn't, we never could get signed. So uh, one year, what we did was we uh, uh, we all jumped in. It was me. It was my group, the Brad. Uh, uh, a few other, yeah, a few other artists that were in uh, in Chicago at the time. We all jumped in this band. A uh, lady by the name of Helen Wooten was uh, kind of like uh, uh, our managers, so she put us all in this van and we drove down to Washington D.C. and uh, we had a showcase, but nobody came to the showcase because nobody knew who we were. So we're we're performing in front of this empty audience, <laughs> you know, with nobody there. Um, so you know what well, we decided, man, that we were going to go outside the hotel and just sing for anybody who walked up. And, uh, and and Eddie F, Heavy D's DJ, was one of the people that walked up. He was like, yo, man, uh, we like, can, can we sing for you? And he was like, go ahead, I don't care. Did you so know who he was, though? Did, did you know he, that he was Eddie F? Yeah, we knew, we knew he was Eddie F. Because, you know, okay. we, we watched the videos. We, you know, okay. like, oh, that's Eddie F right there. Let's go over that, you know. So um, uh, we asked him, can he sing? Can, can we sing? Uh, he was like, yeah, go ahead. So we started singing. He loved it. He was like, yo, man, I'm going to sign you guys. You know, quite naturally, we didn't believe it. Okay. Uh, so, when he, so when he walked off, we started singing for somebody else. We seen another star come out. So we started singing for, for them. He immediately walked back over and was like, no, don't sing for nobody else, guys. I'm going to sign you. And, uh, and about what, a month later, two months later, he sent us plane tickets from, uh, from Atlanta. I mean, he sent us plane tickets to, to, uh, to um, Chicago to fly to Jersey, where he lived at at the time. And uh, and that's that's how we got time. Well, was it the group and the brats or just it was the group? Not the group, the whole group. But what about the brat? You said she was part of the. Did she? She, no, was, she had got. She had met at that time. She had met Jermaine Dupree. Okay. And and she had got signed as well. Okay. Okay. So he signed. These, how many were in the group? Uh, four. It's four member group. Okay. So, what did your folks say when you <laughs> when you said? Heavy D's DJs signing us and, and, and sending us to Atlanta. How, were they like, yeah, go ahead? Or wait, say it again. I, I missed the question. Say it again. Your family, your parents. What do they think when you told them that Heavy D's DJ is about to sign us and I'm flying to um, Atlanta? You know what, my my parents, um, they were okay with it. Again, they were they weren't too much involved in in my musical career like that because again, my my, my um when I met Eddie, I think we were, I was like 18. Okay. Uh, at that particular time. Um, so when we met him, uh, my parents, were they were not that involved. You know, my dad was like, man, you better get you a damn job. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and stop thinking about this music stuff. You sitting there laying on my couch and, and, and I got to get up and go to work every day. You got to do something, son. So he wasn't really too happy about, you know, um, about how things were going with me. Because, uh, mm -hmm. again, you know, when you ain't making no money, man, and, yeah. and, and you got to watch your pops get up, he, he kind of pissed off about that. So. Uh, but they were very happy, very very supportive. Um, I got on that plane, man, and and um, and uh, uh, I never looked back. So then, before you get signed, what what happens that you only you go through? What what happens? So when we get to so when we get to uh, uh well, we, the group had already been together for quite some time. You know, I think we were already together maybe about three or four years. Wow. Uh, so, you know, we, we were already having some problems, you know, because we, we, we didn't make it. Uh, it, was, it was hard for us. So we already had some turmoil going on inside the group before we met Eddie. So that was our, our last hope was just to go out there and sing for anybody because after that, we would have been done with each other. So mm -hmm. he kind of saved us as a group. So by the time we got to Eddie's house, you know, um, I was pretty much one of the songwriters of the group. There was another guy by the name of Tovar who, uh, who was one of the writers of the group. Uh, also, Paul... Uh, was a, uh, uh, he didn't write as much, but he did write some. So when we got to Eddie's place, um, I was the only one who can play the, uh, play the piano. So when we got there, Eddie had this, uh, he had a pre-production room and he also had the big studio in his house. Wow. So he would let us go down there and just, just create and just learn the equipment. But it was just me going down there. You know, I would just be in that room all day. You know, he had, Eddie probably had maybe like, four or five other artists not besides us living there too. 
But I was just, I was just monopolized that space, man. Everybody would try to get in there. I'd just be in there by myself with the dope clothes, you know, just trying to learn this equipment. Yeah. Uh, while the other guys was, you know, nobody else did music. So the other guys would be outside playing basketball. And I guess one day while we were there, uh, a big fight broke out, you know, on the basketball court and, and the fought, I mean, and, and the, uh, the fight came from outside to inside. So they bust a big hole in his walls. Oh, God. So he was like, yo, man, y'all got to get the hell out of my house. <laughs> I brought you guys here to work and, 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 and y'all messing up my house. Like, y'all got to go. So he sent everybody home. Not just, not, not just me, but all the other groups that was there too, everybody had to go home. So when we went home, um, about a month later, he called me up. He was like, yo, Donnell, um, let me go back a little bit. He had a, uh, he had a, um, he had a compilation album that he was coming out with um, called The Untouchable. Oh, from Motown. Okay. And, uh, and I had wrote a song with Dave Hall for that project called I Can Make You Feel Real Good. That's the only song that me and the group ever had that came out. So he knew that I was a songwriter that he loved what I did. So when he sent us home, he called me up. He said, yo, Donnell, I'm working on this new artist called Usher. Um, I want you to come and write a song with me. I'm going to fly you back down to come write a song. So when he flew me back, you know, I wrote the song. Um, Usher liked it. I met him. Um, so Puff had heard that record. He was like, yo, this dude kind of got a nice writing style. Why don't you send him over here? Because I got a, I got a track that can't nobody write to. It's been hard for people to write to this damn track. So I want I want to see if, if, uh, if Donnell could do it. So I went over there, man, and I, I wrote uh, um, Think of You uh, with Faith Evans. And, uh, and that became one of uh, Usher's biggest records. And that from that point on, man, I mean, my life started to change. Um, um, shortly after that, uh, I had wrote, I had produced and wrote In the Hood, um, Yearning, and I think, uh, uh, I forget the other name of the song that's on that album. But I had wrote it. Eddie F was like, yo, man, go back home and try to get the guys to, uh, to record these records with you. So I went back home, uh, tried to get them to record it. Uh, actually, we wrote, we wrote uh, In the Hood together. Uh, but I tried to get them to record the record. They wouldn't record it. So I just recorded it myself. And when I got back to uh, when I oh, what got do, back what to Eddie, they, what do you mean they wouldn't want to record it? What do, they didn't want to do it. They didn't want to, they didn't want to do it. You know, at that time, I think they were still upset that Eddie had brought me out there by myself, you know, um, but when I came back, I was like, yo, Eddie liked these joints right here. Um, he wants us to record it so I can bring it back. You know what I'm saying? So they didn't want to record it. So what happened was wow. I ended up recording the songs myself, got back and, uh, gave them to Eddie. He loved it. He was like, yo, I say, man, I ain't want to do it. He said, right, I'm going to go, I'm going to go get you a deal. So he went and got me a deal. He went and sat down with LA Reed, man, and, and, and played the music for, I think he played it for, for LA and Pebbles. And uh, and at that time, man, uh, they was like, "Yo, I, I want to meet him. You know, bring bring him down to Atlanta." And uh, when I got down to Atlanta, I I, I sang uh, "Yearning" live for him, and he was like, "Yo, young brother, come back with a with a record. I want to put it out." Wow, goodness! I mean, I think most people will listen to this and not understand why the guys are saying you've got a golden opportunity, and they would just say no. Could they be that upset that they that they would just think, you know, you know, forget it. We'd rather go work in McDonald's than than actually sing. Well, no, because at that at that time when I was working with um with, with Eddie and, and I was writing those songs, they were also working with a uh, another artist in Chicago. They were writing oh, some songs okay. for some other people in Chicago. Okay. I just think that they felt like, okay, well, you got your thing going on. I'm gonna have my I'm, we're gonna have our thing going on. But okay. when I tried to get it, you know, get us back together to record those songs, it it just they they just didn't want to do it. So yeah. I wasn't gonna miss the opportunity. I just went ahead and did the songs and uh. And again, you know, we were already going through a lot of stuff as a group already. Yeah. So that was like the final nail in the coffin right there. Now, the one thing you skipped over is that here you are, you moved out, you met Eddie, you're meeting Puffy. I mean, he was probably one of the biggest people around by that time. How yeah. did it feel? Did you feel in awe or did you just feel like, yeah, no problem, you're just, you're just working? Or did you just, did you not realize there was this, this is so much so quick? Not, it, it, it may sound like it was quick, but it wasn't that quick. You know, um, um, this, this was years and years and years of work that we had did as a group to even get to that point. So for me, um, me and Puff and all that, I mean, I'm, I'm not a starstruck person. I don't, you know, I, 
my my opportunity to work that was what I always wanted so I I went in with my head down and I, I worked you know um when I got to uh to Jersey and, and to New York um uh, Eddie put me around a lot of I was around Kenny Green you know what I'm saying so I was around I was around uh Dave Hall I was around yeah. Kenny Carnegie uh Kenny Tongue um, a lot of a lot of his untouchable producers I was around, uh, and it and it developed my sound. It developed my craft. I mean, I was around Eddie. You know what I'm saying? So, so um, um, he put me around a lot of great people, man. So when it was time to work, I just worked. You know, I just yeah. worked, and I never. When I got there that time, I, I stayed. You know, I stayed there, and I, mm -hmm. I never went back home except you know to, to visit, uh, to visit my family. But New York became my my home at that point because now I'm working. Now I'm working. I'm, I'm getting things done, mm -hmm. and uh, um. That's what things happen for me.